Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the webinar organized by the Italian Chamber of Commerce, the Katowice Special Economic Zone, and the Silesia Automotive and Advanced Manufacture Cluster. The, the, the team of today is uh, automotive, the new normal, so we will try to understand with our specialists today, with our partners, uh, what is the near future of the automotive sector. We will have international guests from Randstad and Rockwell Automation. And uh, uh, this is uh, the first uh, event uh, under the EABM, uh, EABM uh, um, brand. We, we, we call it this road to IBM because uh, from now we start a specific activity dedicated to the topics uh, normally uh, discussed during IBM and we will continue during this uh, period to the next IBM event to maintain to maintain webinar dedicated. So let me introduce uh, our uh, uh, ambassador, His Excellency uh, Mr. Aldo Amati, for uh, um, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Piero. Thank you for organizing this. I think it's very useful. And uh, uh, I was watching last night uh, a broadcast on Italian TV, and the, there was the representative of BMW, actually the president of BMW Italy in one of the programs. And uh, I must say that he expressed a lot of concern about the, the automotive industry. And he, he said, not as much as for the production, but for the consumption, for the demand. And uh, I was impressed how serious, how worried he was. And uh, also the answers that he got from apparently from uh, uh, different uh, government officials, not only in Italy, but also in Germany, uh, he said that they were kind of worrying. So it is very useful to have, a, uh, to have this chance to, to see how uh, the perspectives here in, in, in Poland are in the near and the medium future. And uh, so I, I leave the floor to, to the most competent people and uh, thanks again. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador. And uh, um, should be with us also uh, Mr. Antonino Mafoda, Director of the uh, Warsaw Office of Italian Trade Agency. Antonino, if you want to welcome us. Il microfono. I, do, I, I see him, but uh, hello. Uh, hello, I'm Isabella Laskowska, uh, and my director uh, asked me to participate in uh, this meeting. So uh, I um, so I would like to welcome all participants in, in the name of my, our, my director. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, um, I introduce you, Mr. Mateusz Rikawa, Vice President of the Special, uh, the Katowice Special Economic Zone. I remember to all the participants that uh, the Special Economic Zone of Katowice has been ranked uh, number two in the world. So we are talking with uh, one of the most important representatives of uh, the economic zone in the world. Mateusz. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. It's an honor for me to be here with you. Special Economic Zone used to be everywhere where important things happened for the automotive industry, and still we are here and will be here. Thank you for organizing this meeting. Now we're on the road to IABM. But what is important, we have to think about the reality we live in and what future will bring us. This is the first meeting of uh, that kind of meeting. So for sure, it is important for us to be with you, with our friends from automotive industry. For sure, 
everything will change for all of us. If we will be together in this change, we may win. Thank you and enjoy the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mateusz. Thank you for being with us. Uh, so now I leave the the the, the, um, the yes. word to Luke Palmen, uh, Innovation and Cooperation Manager of Silesia Cluster, that will manage uh, all the webinar. So thank you very much, and Luke, this is for you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, hello everybody in this meeting. Um, today's meeting will last until three o'clock. Uh, in the first part, we will have uh, three presentations. Uh, the first one will be done by Łukasz Gorecki, and uh, it's about the new normal in automotive. The second one is about uh, new issues on the labor market and issues related to employment and motivation of uh, employees. It will be done by Randstad Research Institute. And the third uh, presentation is about uh, the use of uh, Industry 4.0 solutions for um, remote management of production systems uh, on the basis of practical experiences of local automation. A very nice also uh, introduction to our discussion that will be uh, organized in the second part of this meeting today. Uh, the meeting is being registered so that we will have the opportunity to come back to the issues uh, after the meeting. Uh, parts of the uh, meeting will be published on YouTube or on other social media. Uh, and for what concerns the discussion uh, and the methodology for the discussion, we will come back to this later on. So I would like now uh, to give the floor to Łukasz Gorecki uh, with the first presentation. Please, Łukasz. Good afternoon, everyone. Łukasz Gurecki, uh, Salesia Automotive and Advanced Manufacturing Cluster. It's a pleasure for me to, to start this official part of, of the meeting. Please give me a time to, to start my presentation. Okay, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, I prepared. Okay. Is my presentation visible for you? Yes, we can see. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's great. So I start yes, again. Yes, yes. That's great. So I start again. So I prepared short presentations about the role of the automotive uh, in European and Polish economy. I think it will be a good background for our further discussion. Uh, most of our guests are probably related to the automotive industry, but for sure not everyone. So some general information uh, will be useful for us for this, for this discussion. Uh, I want to show and prove you how important is this sector for European uh, economy and for Polish economy as well and how these uh, unpredictable situations might affect and change our automotive market. At the beginning, uh, a few numbers uh, that show the role of the uh, automotive industry in European. Uh, almost 40 million Europeans work in automotive industry. It is about 6% of all European jobs and also about 11% uh, of manufacturing jobs. Uh, motor vehicles account for about 430 billions in taxes in European Union, countries only in 15 European countries. Uh, the automobile industry generates trade surplus for European Union more than 84 billion euro. Wukash, uh, I'm sorry, we are just uh, seeing the first slide. Uh, you are probably already uh, father. Yes. So maybe you can uh, enable your screen once again so we can okay. see the following slides. Okay. 
I can see the first one. This presentation mount doesn't work. So it's again stuck. Okay. So if you could please again turn off and turn on and for right. example present in oh, okay yeah. okay if you go through presentation mode maybe yeah to the presentation screen mode, mode screen mode is not so easy. visible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how about right now it's, Have you it's seen hanging mouse? in presentation mode okay so you may turn on uh reading mode which is uh one to the left from presentation mode and it will be also better uh, not this one, to to right, here, yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Perfect. Right. That's great. Perfect, thank you. So maybe I will back to this uh, slide once again, because it'll be easier for you to understand if you see the numbers. So uh, at the beginnings, a few numbers that show the role of automotive industry in the European Union. Uh, almost 40 million Europeans work in this industry. It gives about 6% of all European jobs. It is about 11% of manufacturing jobs in the European Union. Uh, the automotive industry account almost 430 billion in taxes. Uh, and the trade surplus for European Union is about 85 billion euro. Uh, the turnover generate about 7% of the European uh, GDP. Uh, and this uh, industry, automotive industry, is also the largest European private contributor to innovation. If we talk about Poland, it is also a very important sector. The second largest industrial sector responsible for about 13% of salt production value. So the second place right behind food sector. It is also the most export industrials in Poland, worth about 34 billion euro. It is about 15% of Polish export. If you have a look on this data, we see the role of the automotive industry in the Polish economy. About uh, turnover in manufacturing part of automotive is about 37 billion euro. If we add the next part of the trade and the repair in automotive, we reach almost 85 billion euro turnover. Almost 200 people is working for a manufacturing part of automotive. Together with trade and repair, it gives us almost half a million people working for automotive. If we speak about automotive industry, we usually link uh, to the car production. So the OEMs located in Poland produce about 650 cars, about 400 passenger cars, about 200 light commercial vehicles and trucks, and about 7,000 buses. Buses and coaches became our specialization. We see significant growth in this part of automotive market in Poland, 24% by year. So Poland is not the leader of car production, for sure. Our neighboring countries produce much more. But if we have a look on this map, we see that, for example, from Silesia region, from the distance about 300 kilometers, are produced almost 3 million cars. So we are significantly the best place to locate the producers of car components and parts. That what I said is proven on this graph. We see that dominate the production of car parts. The production value about 21 billion euro comes from production of car parts and the next 60 billion euro from car production. That what I said before, uh, we, that's I said this, that what I said before, uh, this uh, manufacturing part of production of, of part production uh, is growing rapidly. During last 10 years, it grew almost 100 percent. 
On this slide, you see some Polish specialization. As I mentioned before, the buses and coaches, light commercial vehicles, semi-trailers and trailers, and for sure car components. On the red belt, uh, you see uh, the share in export of the European Union. Uh, and if, if we talk about the, the car parts, we see significantly uh, that the seat belts, car seats, steering systems are our specialization. General, we can say that despite of many different trends, new trends that affected automotive industry during last uh, few years, uh, about some of this trend we discussed during the third three edition of International Automotive Business Meeting. Uh, despite this trend, uh, some of them are of course negative impact on automotive industry, but general we can assume that automotive sector was doing well. Many experts focus the Polish automotive industry is growing, that it will grow in the next years from different scenarios uh, from 6% even to 1% in pessimistic scenario. So now is the question, are these scenarios still actual? Because unfortunately, happened unpredictable situations that resulted that automotive industry stopped in the beginning of 2012. On this map, uh, this map show production losses for car production. More than 2 million cars is not produced in European Union because of the shutdown so far, because this is the data for March. The average shutdown lasts 28 working days at the moment. The number of employees affected in the car plant is over 1.1 million in the European Union an estimation in Poland about 7, 17,000. A pandemic channel uh, for automotive is mainly caused by collapse of demand, supply chain disruption, operational downtime, price drop and financial problems of recipient. We see the car registration trend on the March 2012. The registration in European Union goes down 55%. What can we expect in the future, in the near future? For sure, further measures and acquisitions, reducing expenditure for research and development in this, er in this part of, uh, of industry. Temporary changes in the demand structure, focus on the cheaper segment, on combustion cars. For sure, the delay of revolution of electromobility. For sure, the slowdown in development of idea of car sharing. And for sure, the revision of value chain. Possibly, again, increase in popularity of local approach versus current globalization. Should we worry about automotive industry in Poland? Of course, as a leading exporter of suppliers and supplier for European automotive industry, Poland has a lot of to lose in this situation. Most of our companies are foreign capital, so decisions are taken outside of the Poland. But on the other hand, Poland is still cost advantages country and our closeness to European Union might be additional advantage. Polish industry is strongly shifted toward the part production, what we mentioned before, so maybe the aftermarket can partially mitigate the impact of the crisis. But uh, for sure, the unemployment rate in Poland will grow at the end of the year, so many people will lose their job. The industry is not left without help. Few examples, for example, in Katowice Special Economic Zone, who coordinate the automotive cluster. We, from very beginning of the pandemic, started our supporting actions on the area of, for example, legal assistance, 
Every Friday, we organize webinars where our experts answer the questions about accessible financial tools, supporting tools. We have created a platform to exchange a good best practice on the field of occupational health and safety. Every Wednesday, more than 100 companies meet online to discuss how to ensure the safety of work, people, how to prepare the plant to restart. Our special dedicated fast response team is ready to support our companies every day. As a part of our toolbox, we've implemented tools that make our companies easier access to suppliers of most ordered products today, uh, occupational health and safety products. This is only a part of our supporting activities. For automotive sector are available financial tools prepared by Polish government, anti-crisis shield worth 50 billion euro. But not only, but also the local economy programs like Salesia, uh, Salesia economy package worth almost 230 million euro. Accessible are also resources from European Union, European Central Bank, European Investment Bank, European Commission. Everyone declare help. So the question is, is it enough to fast recover the automotive industry? Will the automotive industry return to its previous state? What will be the new normal in automotive? So I would like to leave this question open and I think we will find the answer on during our discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this presentation. A lot of questions uh, open, so for the discussion after the presentation, it will be very interesting to hear from our uh, participants uh, what is their opinion about uh, these new issues. Anyhow, um, a very important issue is uh, employment, uh, the fear or the uh, uncertainty among employees and the way we have to organize our companies today. Uh, a very nice uh, presentation will be uh, given now by uh, Dagmara Zuromska from Randstad. So Dagmara, I'll give you the floor now, please. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay. I will try to share my screen. Yes. Uh, Okay. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, but you are sharing the whole screen. You should share your presentation only, probably. Uh, okay, I will try to make it once again. Mm -hmm. We will see. Okay. Maybe this one would be better. Right now, it's better? Um, no. No. <laughs> now you are sharing your meeting window. Ah, okay, no. sorry. It's okay. You should share uh, your presentation. Once again, uh, sharing my screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, okay, I will share my whole screen because I'm connected without uh, application. So maybe that's why it works yes, like yes. that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. It's visible. I uh, from my understanding. Yes. yes? yes okay. Yes. Perfect. So Can you first of all, slide to check? yeah. Okay. It's working. It's working. Yeah. Thank perfect. <laughs> thank you. So first of all, uh, let me uh, thank you all for coming here today. I'm very happy that so many of you could make it. Um, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Dagmara Żuromska and I'm responsible for supporting my clients in their business growing in talent management area. And on behalf of France at Poland, uh, allow me to extend a warm welcome to you and thank you webinar organizer for having us here. I would like to talk today about the impact of the ep ep epidemiological situation on the labor market. So uh, this presentation is divided in two parts. The first part will cover 
the current situation and context of changes caused by COVID-19 uh, crisis. And the second, we will see how the situation on the labor market would, will, would like in the near future and what our employees plan. And we will share a few comments uh, from our meetings with our clients. So as you can see, uh, on almost 85 percentage of companies transition at the remote working starting from the first day when the Polish government uh, officially announced the closure of uh, schools. Uh, almost 60% of our clients have already prepared business continuity planning, so they were prepared to act in crisis management times. And uh, to limit the negative impact of COVID-19, the companies also decided to freeze recruitment and employment. It was around uh, 41%. A small percentage of the companies uh, which were surveyed also took more radical steps. So they decided to cut wages and benefits. Also, what is obvious, plans regarding new investment was suspended and it was almost 28% of our uh, uh, responders. The current situation on the labor market in the context of changes caused by COVID-19. So we have to say that most of, most of our clients had to implement special preventive measures, like Wukash has already um, mentioned that, freezing production, introduction, introduction temperature monitoring of people who are entering the facilities. Uh, of course, increasing the frequency of uh, cleaning um, uh, of cleaning uh, points of increased contacts or like dirk handles. Also uh, installing conditional dispenser with disinfectant fluids and uh, introduction, recommend, uh, introduction recommended in dollars between uh, employees in, in companies canteen and the distribution method for, for meals. What we also observe was a flexible reaction for current market needs. As we already mentioned, automotive sector was highly impacted and engineers tried to find new products and to help avoid completely stop of their uh, company's activities. So some of engineers decide, decided to design and print it in 3D visors, which they gave to doctors and paramedics. Some of companies which has increased the production of special respirator batteries by half. Uh, some of our clients also changed the, the production line where it was possible. So, for example, they decided to hygiene, uh, to start producing hygiene liquid and healthcare products. Also, some of our clients decided to manufacture face masks for companies in the area and transfer them to the local hospitals. Please remember that all these activities help employees to feel better and they, they are feeling needed in this crisis times. And also these activities place your company as taking care of the local community. You will see that in the near future, it, was, it will pay off. Uh, I prepare also information about the situation of the automotive sector, but I will skip this uh, slide because Vukash uh, perfectly covered the um, information about the employment uh, in automotive sector. So what about situation on the labor market in the new future? Not to be so pessimistic, it is worth to stress that some automotive companies are starting production slowly. So. Toyota or Daimler, PCA is going to reopen the activity in the next week. And we cooperate mainly with international automotive sector and this pandemic has been uh, hitting differently depending on the country that uh, our clients headquarters are placed in. So some of our clients have still have orders and after implementing all restrictions required by the government, they came back to daily work. However, it's not 100% of their capability. Also, for example, manufacturers of German or Italian car parts still have to stop production or produce on the lower capacity. All these uh, um, effects uh, caused uh, the, that over 50% of our temporary employees lost their job within one month. Uh, most of our clients had to decide to reduce uh, staff shifts. So for example, from four to three shifts. 
And companies at this moment are also afraid to hire directly. That's why they, if they have the recruitment need, they have to employ temporary employees first. Moving on uh, the slide, um, I would like to briefly um, speak about Randstad Work Monitor. Well, Randstad Work Monitor is a quarterly survey conducted in Poland since uh, 2010. The current edition includes a special part dedicated to additional survey carried out between 24 uh, of March and 30 of March this year regarding the impact of coronavirus virus epidemic on the working situation of the responders. As you can see on the right of the slide, 26% of employees evaluate the risk of losing their job as a high. One in five employees feels no concerns regarding their job loss. The risk of losing their jobs is 70% more compared to the value obtained before the pandemic. As you can notice, we have two quarter fears. So before uh, epidemic, the level of uh, insecurity was 9%. And after pandemic, 26%, as I already mentioned, it's 17% difference, which is a huge one. Also, please take a look at the right side of the, of the graph that this 26% uh, is the highest rate in the survey history. So on the left, you see that at the beginning of our uh, surveys, it was only 7%, now it's 26%. Now I would like to speak about um, what influence uh, has an epidemic uh, or pandemic on our uh, employees. So as you can notice, the concern mentioned most frequently in by polls in relation to coronavirus pandemic are salary cuts. It's almost almost. 41%. At the same time, 31% do not have any concern at this moment. But you have to uh, also notice that employees are afraid to be fired or that, or that, or that the company will be closed. Moving to organizational changes during the pandemic, you can see that a lot of companies had to make a huge effort to be more uh, to, to operate during these times. As you can see, most uh, commonly mentioned and include equipping the workplace with additional cleaning and disinfecting agents. So it was almost 50%. Uh, remote work, 37%. Limited direct uh, customer service activities, 35%. Uh, 5%, providing personal protective equipment to employees, 25%, reducing working hours, 19%, and holding company meetings using uh, or remote um, tours, which was 15%. 18% of enterprises suspend their operation on their own when the pandemic has started, and 13% did this as a result of state authority decision. So you have to notice that not every closure was made by uh, our clients by their own. 10% of companies implemented safeguards such as plexiglass, especially in customer service centers. Server, server responders stated that 9% of work establishments did not take any additional action. On the next slide, we prepare five top uh, actions in individual sectors. So for example, you can see that in industrial sector, equipment, the workplace with additional cleaning was on the first stop. Then uh, that uh, most, if was possible, most of the uh, employees were asked to work remotely and that employees provi uh, employers provided the employees the special equipment like masks to, to be able to support their um, uh, clients. So in conclusion, let me make some um, sum up points about the current situation. Here you, uh, you can notice uh, more uh, information about the individual sector, so about finance or education. The presentation will be provided to you, so you will be able to look for your sector and um, see the data more deeply. So, conclusions. 
this is the time that when Poles are the most cared out about keeping their job. So we have to admit that um, employees are pessimistic about finding a new job. They are afraid, uh, as I already mentioned, of losing their current uh, place of, of work. Few employees expect to get a job, uh, a better job than they have uh, already. And a lot of employees are afraid of salary cuts and benefits at this moment. Also, like we have already discussed, coronavirus caused enormous reorganization in the most enterprises in our country. So what are employees' plan? We prepare few information about call for action. What should we do? What should we think about when we think about uh, coming back to the new reality? So the most important is ensure health protection and plan are in place and followed without exception. You also have to recognize and burden with trade unions to identify treats to workers' health, rights and welfare and to develop yeah. and implement workplace responses. I hope I'm able to, can you hear me? Ah, okay, thank, okay. thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. So we have to also recognize and exercise the duty of care for all of workers in their business. You have to also think about uh, your suppliers. You have to speak to them openly about uh, all situation that is happening right now. And you have to engage your employees uh, to be also responsible and accountable for all the standards, new standards that you implement in your company. So um, you have to also recognize production processes and work methods to ensure social distancing uh, and avoid virus spread. Also, it's important uh, to customize and responsible, prepare a responsible workplace and working uh, arrangement for all uh, workers. It seems highly likely that um, there will be a requirement for some form of social distancing, distancing uh, for some time to time. Lockdown restriction will likely be lifted incrementally and all staff who can work from home will be expected to carry on doing uh, so. Where certain groups of employees or businesses are part of a sectoral return to workplace, Employees will need to consider the detailed risk management approaches to safeguard their health and minimize the risk of uh, the infection. Uh, for example, in Randstad, uh, earlier before the pandemic, we treated uh, working from home as a benefit for us. And now everybody as well of us would like to, to come back to, to our office space to work with our colleagues. And the last but not least is to deal with redundancies and related issues. Also, you have to take um, deep attention. Okay, I Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> also, you have to um, put a special attention to um, migrant workers because some of them are uh, being um, not with their families, with their relatives, are particularly helpless. Also, the privacy of personal information of workers must be protected as they undergo medical and other examination and checks as a part of responding to treat posed by coronavirus-19. It's very important because it's also a very sensitive data. Given that the pr uh, priority for every business uh, should be managing a safe return to the workplace for staff, it's crucial that you work in close cooperation uh, with your health and safety and occupational health team where possible. Communicate the practical measures you are taking to staff on a regular basis to help reassure them that their health, well-being and safety is on your top priority. So make sure employees are clear about what procedure they should follow if, if they begin to feel unwell, both in the workplace and at home. Some of our clients implemented, for example, short survey before uh, for everybody before entering the facility. With 
uh, questions about the contact with somebody who potentially could be uh, infected by coronavirus. The risk to people's health from the pandemic are also uh, psychological and physical. These include uh, anxiety about ongoing health crisis and of fear of infection, as well as social isolation due to lockdown. You have to think about that, that many will experience challenging domestic situation, uh, such as uh, juggling uh, childcare or caring for a weak relative, as well as financial worries, for example, if a partner has lost their income. Some will have experienced illness or even a bereavement. Even if staff have carried out uh, working and participating in video meetings, they will still need to adjust to working uh, in a shared environment with uh, colleagues. Some of them will have uh, some kind of uh, uh, insecurity using public transport to, to work. Many might find uh, that they are still coming to terms with the significant change which society has seen as the familiar workplace routine could be very different from this one from the comparing to the last month. So you have to be prepared to uh, be re, to prepare a reorientation, a reintroduction process, re, processes for return, returning staff and encourage as, and support every manager to have one-to-one -one return meetings with every employee where our focus is on health and safety and well-being of your uh, employees. Managers have to have a very sensitive and open discussion with every individual and discuss any adjustment and ongoing support that they need to facilitate an effective return to workplace. Finally, it will be important for every employer to ensure that the organization culture is inclusive so that every employee feels that are returning to a supportive and caring uh, environment. Also, it's uh, worth to be uh, to, to said that possibility of incoming quarantine, so 14 days in some countries, uh, when you hire a candidate from abroad, it will it will affect like a blocker for for your daily activity. Also, it was raised uh, during the meetings in European Union that there will be possibility on uh, on implementing of health passport for us like European citizens. Also, closing borders affect daily uh, business activities and has an impact on the supply chain process. What is the role of, uh, how does, how we found ourselves like Randstad in this new reality? So as, as you do, uh, we uh, remove uh, all processes to remote processes. So we manage online recruitment. We assigned electronic contract with our temporary employees. Consultation uh, are uh, managed by video conferencing. And we are on the um, stage that we will develop this trend to avoid the risk of the second wave. So we will see what kind of activities were successful and what can we uh, do better. Uh, also, as we compare the situation with the crisis in 2008, um, we see that uh, our clients uh, have a little bit of uh, fear to contract a candidate at this moment directly because of the or legal uh, issues. Uh, if you are interested, we are able to provide you a, a short leaflet about onboarding online. It's also very important if you hire new and you, if you have new entrants, you have to uh, secure them that the onboarding process will be provided in a very detailed way. And how to manage recruitment processes and how the process will look like. We spoke about that internally and it's good for you to see, to consider what is your current talent, uh, internal talent pool at this moment. So you can see if you, you are able having new opportunity for, so open new, a new place, a uh, new job, new place of work. So we have to see if somebody from your company is able to help this position. And if not, 
of course, uh, you have to go to look for this um, worker externally. It's a very good time for you to see what kind of uh, employees do you have in your uh, headcount. And uh, it's a very good time to, to make decisions. What's next? Um, so we prepare information also about how does uh, all the sector, industrial sector in Poland look like. So as we already mentioned, the automotive uh, sector is uh, the most uh, in charge. But also similarly, the light industry, uh, which apart from maintaining employees, uh, has uh, increased uh, high rental cost, mainly in shopping center, which have been uh, closed uh, as uh, during the quarantine time. So FMD sector, uh, despite of uh, forecast for increases, is also failing because all bars, restaurants and hotels are still closed. Uh, the businesses that the uh, sector that uh, has increased during the pandemic time is, are manufacturers of protective clothes, sanitary measures, and pharmaceutical uh, or cosmetic industry. And a few words uh, at the end of uh, our presentation. So, changes to the current uh, lockdown registration are likely to be slow and gradual. While we really don't know yet what kind of specific steps will be taken to start the, lift, uh, the lockdown, there are certain principles and measures that every employer will have to consider. So for you as a, uh, companies, as employers, it's the right time to prepare and plan your next steps. For example, in case of downside scenarios, please think about your employer branding uh, on the market. I remember my candidates from 2008 uh, when, for example, they rejected the offer from, uh, from our client because they told me, you know, I wasn't treated well during the financial crisis 12 years ago. So please consider that, that your every activity will be recognized on the market and it's better to uh, prevent than, than uh, uh, it's, it's better to prevent, sorry. So uh, the most important uh, part of uh, your contact with your employees is also communication. So you have to keep people informed of what your business is doing, whether it's a good or bad uh, news for individual, will help them to, to make their own decision and give them some degree of security in very uncertain times. So if your employees will know that they are valued and supported by you, you will continue, continue to prioritize their health and safety. It will be pivotal to their well-being. Also, please pay the specific attention to staff who have particular requirements, so health issues, disability, childcare, or any other caring responsibility. Sometimes it won't be so easy for them to come back to this new reality and be aware that some employees had a reasonable adjustment before may need to a different one on their return to, to workplace. Similarly, many individuals who didn't have uh, previously a mental health condition may have experienced mental health changes at this moment and need to discuss these uh, changes to help uh, them overcome any barriers for the future uh, and fulfill their role, sorry. I'm sorry for uh, being, I wanted to, to, to tell you so many things and I hope you enjoy this part. In June uh, this year, so within a few weeks, Randstad will publish new report based on employer's plan in a pandemic time. So I hope uh, you will be interested in that and our organize uh, organizer would provide you with uh, with this report so thank you very much uh, the subject is so interesting and deep so we could speak about that um, in the q and a session and uh, i will pass now to my colleague okay thank you very thank much you. Uh, it was a very interesting presentation there are several issues we probably will uh, raise during our discussion as you mentioned, one of the issues is uh, online recruitment, online onboarding, and we're talking about online. It's not only related to the employees themselves, but also to production processes. 
And when we talk about uh, remote uh, control of our production systems, especially in times when a lot of people are working from home, then the question is how to solve this. Uh, Rockwell Automation was able in the past years to create a system uh, within which they were able to link the company uh, to an information system. And thanks to this, they were able uh, to react in a very flexible way when the COVID crisis came uh, to keep their production ongoing. And that's why I would like to ask uh, Ms. Katarzyna Ruchawa uh, to start her presentation about the connected enterprise. Uh, Katarzyna, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Hello. Okay. So you can uh, become presenter. Okay. So let me know if you, when you see my presentation and if you see it clear, clearly. Uh, okay, we see the beginning yes, of the presentation. It. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, so let me, before I hand it over to Katarzyna, uh, my name is Darius Wojciechowski, I'm also from Local Automation, and I'm responsible... Darius, your microphone is from bad quality, so please check the microphone. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, there might be some echo in my room, so maybe, okay, uh, if it doesn't work well, then I'll hand it over to Katarzyna, maybe, so... Is it better right now, or? No, it's not. So it's um, not. Okay. I will do the interaction. Yeah, sorry okay. for that. <laughs> That's okay. So uh, my name is Katarzyna Ruchała. I work for uh, Rockwell, as you can see. And it will be my pleasure today to show you how we implemented MES solution in our plant in Katowice and how it's helped us to work uh, remotely uh, and even remotely managing our production line in uh, shop floor. So, uh, I will go to the next one. Okay, so uh, for the beginning, a little bit about our uh, production in Katowice, our shop floor in Katowice. Right now we have more than 400 employees on production and we have six production lines. As you can see below, we have some ICB lines which produce contractors and switches. We have safety lines with safety products like contact blocks, uh, MV and MCC products which are uh, medium and low voltage drivers, kinetics line with servo motors. Do you hear me now? Because I had some communicate. Yes, we can. Yes, it's okay. Okay, okay. It's okay. thank please, you. Please. Uh, okay, so uh, the next one is uh, sheet metal, which is our sub assembly from for our ETO lines. Uh, what's important uh, in Katowice production is that we have mostly manual production right now and uh, half of our production is ETO businesses and the second half is and the second half is uh, standard products uh, you may say. Uh, okay. So what was our starting point before the MES implementation? We started uh, almost five years ago and uh, at the beginning before, or maybe uh, I said like that, before uh, implementation of MES system, we have lots of problems with uh, managing production lines because we don't have a data needed to react fast for the problems to see how our processes are going etc etc because all the information from the process uh, were collected on paper forms so daily our uh, team leaders or supervisor of production lines needs to prepare reports based on the paper forms so they need to transform paper information into the excel file then uh, print excel uh, excel uh, charts or, or any information that was required to discuss uh, the the results of uh, production line. So we have uh, lots of waste in time to prepare any information about the status of our production. You can see on this uh, slide uh, how many whiteboards and papers we need to manage a simple, rather simple production line. And uh, of course, because of that, we don't have any transparency in the process and uh, making decision making process was uh, really difficult. And mostly is, it was more intuitive than based on hard data from the system. That's why we um, that's why we decided that we need Katarzyna, some system. Please, can you check if your presentation is rolling because we see the, the same screen? 
Uh, yes, because to... Mrs. Mrs. Katarzyna have turned on private browsing, so it means that we can change slides on our own. And okay. yeah. Uh, okay. So what uh, what should I do to to which one do you see? Maybe <laughs> start from that. The starting point. The or? second slide number two. We see. Yeah. Okay. And right now? Number three. Okay, okay. So Number I was three. talking about this one. <laughs> so uh, on the right side, you can see the photos of the production before MES uh, implementation with lots of whiteboards and lots of papers uh, which were used to control uh, processes. And on the left side, you can uh, see uh, those things I was talking about. So we waste lots of time and lots of forces to uh, prepare some reports, which were manually prepared. And the most uh, difficult thing for us for, was that if we need to uh, go to some details to, uh, to check what was going on, why the charts looks like this or something like that, uh, we need to go back to the paper forms, look for the information, and after some time we were able to give the answer uh, for any questions. So it was really hard to get any answers in easy way. Uh, so that's why we decided to implement MES system, which led us to control the most important uh, processes and most important information about those processes. Uh, I'm going to the next slide, I believe you see it right now, it's the Connected Enterprise in Katowice. And um, so, uh, with implementation, we focus on three areas, you can say, which is technology, which is Factory Talk Production Center, is the Rockwell MES system. Uh, and uh, in the process area, we focus not only about what processes we can uh, move to the system, but mostly uh, we focus on how we can improve those processes by moving into the system. And in the uh, people area, uh, we neglect, neglected it a little bit at the beginning, and it was uh, a problem for us later after implementation, because we don't focus as much on people as we should, and the change management process in implementation like this is the most important thing. So we have to prepare people why you're doing those, those changes, why are you changing the way they are working, and you have to engage, uh, uh, engage uh, management uh, in these processes also, because other way you will implement the system, but you will not get any benefits from it at the end of the day. So uh, those three areas we, we focus the most uh, in implementation and thanks to implementation uh, the system, we uh, go through the transformation uh, on the past few years and right now we are able to have access to all the information we need, we need uh, all uh, KPIs, uh, most important KPIs for us and also go to the details even from mobile in real time. So we have access to all the data needed uh, all the time. Uh, in this implementation, of course, we identify on our production lines some best practices, how to implement something, how to uh, learn this system, how to teach people to this system. And uh, thanks to this, we start this uh, implementation uh, with small steps. So we start from one line and then we go with these uh, solutions to the next line. It was easy to transform those solutions to other production line. Uh, and of course, thanks to the, all those data we, are, uh, we have, thanks to the MES system, we are able now to make better decisions and most importantly, those decisions are ma uh, made based on the uh, on the data from the system. So, okay. Uh, the most important things from the lesson learned perspective to implement uh, solutions like this, which is which is rather complex. Don't forget solutions. to uh, don't forget to put your slides further on. Okay. Uh, for what again? Sorry. Uh, you... Don't forget if you want to go to the next slides to, to yeah. click on the right button. Okay. Yeah, I did. So. Mm -hmm. You see that key takeaway? Yeah. Key takeaway. Okay. okay. Yeah, so so this is the one I want to talk about. Uh, so most important things 
from lesson learned perspective, I uh, is what I said uh, previously, uh, the mindset of people. So uh, the culture cultural change which needs to be made to implement this solution uh, the way it works the best. Uh, you have to work with people a lot about this. You have to talk with them uh, and uh, be uh, prepared that the fear of change is, is big if you change all um, all the way they are working currently. And this is what we did actually, because they were used to work in some way. And right now we, and right back then we implement system and they feel a little bit about uh, that we want them control. We want uh, to control them. And that's not what we want to do. We want to get information about the process to improve this process so at the end of the day we also want to improve they people uh, those people work uh, so it was easier for them so so it's really important to engage people in this process of implementation so from the beginning they understand why we do uh, changes like like this uh, success story and create a win the next thing uh, it's also really important to start small and uh, show people that it may work and it working really great on some small uh, area. For example, for us, it was only one production line at the beginning. And after this, we move to the other production line. And uh, what uh, also you need to remember is that this change is not something which you did once and it's working perfectly. Uh, it's more like a process. So at the end of the day, you will need some structure which, in your company which will be able to maintain uh, those solutions and also to share the knowledge about how to use those solutions and how to uh, cho how to um, use the data and information from the data uh, to improve uh, to, to improve uh, next uh, processes and how to improve them okay and the benefits which uh, this implementation gave us, as you can see uh, on this slide, what's more, and you don't see it right now, is that we were able to uh, to improve our efficiency for 50% percent on uh, this uh, first line we implement this solution because previously before the system, uh, we were able to produce some amount of, uh, of, uh, of uh, motors uh, on three shifts, uh, we have uh, 100 people uh, back then, and right now the same amount of motors we are producing only by 50 uh, people and two shifts. So it is huge progress uh, for production line. And this, this was done only because of implementation of the system, and after this we saw uh, all the issues we have, and we didn't think about them before because uh, after implementation of the system and gathering the data, we were able to see all those issues. So it was clearly what we have to do to improve the uh, processes. Okay, uh, right here you can see uh, different kinds of functionalities our MES system has and we implemented it, uh, it in uh, Katowice plant. This is action management uh, function, which uh, let us to, uh, to communicate uh, from production to all supporting functions. functions. So previously, uh, to if we have some issues, we need to send some emails with one uh, functions, with other we have some one notes and lots of different ways to communicate. A way uh, to communicate and right now we have uh, one system uh, and it is MES which we communicate with all supporting functions so supervisors if they need to check what kind of issue they have on production they just need to open one report and they get all the information about the status of the issues on production they don't need to check lots of different uh, different files or mails etc a performance control of course we in mes this is a key function so we can see what our productivity is, is efficiency is etc so key uh, uh, performance indicators we have all those information in, in real time uh, thanks to tracking and serialization we have also a full uh, traceability of the process we have maintenance module uh, schedule and planning which i'll tell a little bit later big data utilization so uh, 
for me as an analytic the most important part because thanks to all those data we have in the system we are able to see some new patterns which were not uh, which we didn't see before and didn't think before about them and right now we can implement solution which improving our production and were not obvious before to implement employee certification so we have all the trainings in one system all information about how people are trained and where and where they can work uh, also our system supporting eto manufacturing uh, which is much easier much uh, harder to maintain than standard pro pro uh, standard production line uh, we have access from mobile devices to all our dashboard reports all information uh, and we have also a module about the quality controls. So we have all the information about the defects, about the reworks, and about the. And we can implement also some kinds of checklists, for example, if it's necessary. Uh, okay, so one of the module uh, which I would like to focus right now is scheduling and planning. So you have to know that previously, before implementing MES system for our first first line where uh, we implemented it uh, which was kinetics line uh, we have three uh, people three, pr three planists who was um, responsible for planning planning production every day they have lots of excel files when they need to put all information from sap and uh, they were trying to plan the production for the next day it was really time consuming Right now, thanks to implementation on FTPC system, which is uh, connected with our SAP, uh, all this planning is done uh, automatically and our planists don't need to plan the production. They, they Right now, their work uh, looks like this. They more um, looking for some exceptions. So they don't need to planning everything. And uh, right now we have only one planist on this production line. So from three persons in 2015, right now we have only one person who is only checking the exceptions. And it works like this. When we get some work orders from CDC, is going to the SAP. In SAP, we have some uh, settings about the uh, capacity of work centers. Uh, it is uh, automatically uh, scheduled and after automatic uh, release to FTPC, so the so SAP is automatically put information about the work orders to FTPC system, uh, so our MES system, and thanks to this, uh, FTPC have information about the all work orders, and uh, it has option uh, of automatic queue the work orders. So based on the uh, planet finish date about the uh, type of the production some some what kind of product we are doing it is planning and sorting the orders so employee don't need to uh, to to figure it out which order which orders supposed to be done first uh, ftpc so the system is doing uh, it automatically uh, also it is taking uh, information about the uh, setup group key which is a group of product of the same uh, way to uh, to produce so we're reducing the setup time thanks to this and uh, of course thanks to the reports we have real time access to the data about the uh, orders due today for example and uh, orders past due so supervisor don't need to check don't need to go to the production line and check which work order was done and how many we need to produce uh, today they just open one report and have all information about all uh, all uh, orders on production and all information about the issues with them and how, about how many produce how many we did produce and how many we still need to do and uh, for example they also can check uh, what what is the working process on specific part of uh, production line so all the information are in the system and we don't need to do actually anything except uh, if we have some exceptions like we don't have material or something like this uh, so as you can see thanks to this mes implementation and this scheduling and planning module in ftpc uh, we were able to easily uh, let our planners to go work from home because they don't need to be uh, on production line uh, daily to check anything. They easily can do their work from home, which was really important right now in uh, this time for us. 
So I think this is all from my side. I believe I will be able to ask uh, to uh, answer some questions later on the Q&A session. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Katarzyna, for this interesting uh, presentation. Uh, especially when we take a look at the situation, a lot of companies where we still see that the ERP system and the MES system are uh, built as silos, uh, independent from one another, and people are running from one office to another with their, their Excel files to bring all together all data, and that often uh, companies are reacting on past problems instead of uh, foreseeing what tomorrow will bring. And thanks to this kind of solutions where you integrate the systems with one another, uh, people are uh, uh, able to uh, have integrated overview of the whole process in the company. Okay, thank you very much. So now it's time for Q&A and a small discussion. Uh, if you have questions about the presentations you have seen, you can use the chat function. Uh, to write your questions and I will uh, make use of them. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, I would like to, uh, let's let's say, let's start with the Q&A about the presentations we've seen, uh, especially uh, when we start with the presentation about uh, the labor market issues and flexibility of labor force. Uh, there are a lot of discussions going on that uh, in the current situation in Poland, we have a structure of about 70% uh, of people employed according to traditional contracts and 30% in flexible uh, employment uh, scenarios. And that this crisis shows uh, the need for rethinking this model. Um, maybe uh, among us are people representing HR departments and that's also why I would like to ask you for a first comment on this. How do your companies see the current situation in view of the employment model over time? Does your company on this moment uh, reflect on creating a more flexible uh, employment scenario? Uh, are you changing uh, or thinking about changing uh, this kind of uh, employment uh, structure between the flexible employment and the uh, or temporary employments and uh, the traditional uh, employment uh, agreements. Uh, who wants to take the first uh, voice or opinion in this uh, discussion? So I invite you, you can uh, raise your uh, voice. Uh, like I said, uh, this is the methodology of, of discussion online. So if you see that somebody starts, then just leave him uh, with this uh, possibility to speak and then we can uh, ask the second and third person also to, to uh, give their opinion. So who wants to start first? Who wants to give his first comment on this issue? How does your company see this labor market aspect? Who wants to take the first discussion, please? Okay, maybe we can uh, start like, uh, I see that among us is uh, uh, Wukash Vujic. Wukash, are you here? Hello, hello, yes. Luke. Hello, Wukash. Uh, because uh, Wukash is representing the company Paul Motors in Biaskobiawa. It's a company that is uh, active as a Polish company on an international level. Uh, so, uh, at the one side, you see the impact of COVID on the international uh, supply chain, but also on the other side, on the way we have to organize our uh, employees and the way we have to create an, a flexible company to react on this kind of crises. So, Wukash, can you comment on this issue? How do you see the near future of the automotive sector and the role of your company in the employment aspect? Thank you for the uh, for the voice. Uh, so, uh, we can say generally that uh, 
we have to change the optic, I think, because uh, if we look for the general data we can find uh, in the different sources, analytics and so on, uh, it says minus 20 or minus 30 percent drop. But uh, I think we have to be prepared for more, minus 50 or minus 40. And it's, uh, it means that we have to look for our cost structure because uh, we know all the fixed uh, costs. It's not uh, only connected with the labor, with the people. It's uh, the most important part, definitely, but it's, it's only one part. And we have to adopt the whole structure of the cost to the, to the new reality. So what we are doing, of course, uh, uh, we can do what, what is possible, what is manageable in our hands. Uh, also with people, but uh, to start this discussion, I, went, and I think we have to point that we have to act to the to the government, to the officials, to prepare the law, to prepare the solutions which led us to adopt in the whole structure of the uh, of the cost to all fixed costs to the to the uh, new reality, it means new demand, which could be much lower than what we can see. It's 2030, but it could be minus 50 or even minus more. So uh, with the people now, we, we, we've, we've got here a flexible plan. So uh, we want to protect as many uh, our uh, people here in Paul Motors. So we are, um, how to say that, preparing to plan to give uh, the people opportunity to work partially. It means if the demand will be 50 percent that we we agree with the people to 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 work uh, 50 percent uh, with the half of the of the uh, normal uh, work time. And uh, we think this is the only solution. The other solution will be just to maybe one, two, three months we can survive. Uh, with uh, the uh, support of the government, uh, but uh, for a long time uh, we have to create flexible solutions to 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 pay the people for the work which is needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Among us is also Paul Knappen. Paul, are you there? <coughs> yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Paul, you're representing TrueFlex and uh, an international company also with a branch uh, in Poland, but you have as well the situation in Poland as in uh, Western Europe. What is your opinion about the current situation? How does the con COVID epidemic uh, situation uh, impact on the way the employment should be structured for the future in order to be as flexible as possible as a company. What are the challenges according to you? Yeah, perhaps just a little bit of background. Uh, my name is Paul Knapp. I'm general manager of, of TrueFlex in, in Europe. Uh, we make uh, flexible elements or uh, bellows uh, for exhaust after treatment system, but mainly for heavy duty. So we supply uh, a lot of products to uh, the truck industry and to the, uh, as we call it, off-road, so agricultural equipment, uh, tractors, land combines, uh, things like that. Um, we have been faced, especially in April, with a significant uh, reduction in the revenue. It's about 70% uh, less than uh, last year. And uh, that's uh, because the, the, the truck assembly plants uh, closed their operations uh, throughout uh, Europe. Um, we are an American company with uh, Polish operations in uh, in Opole, uh, so part of the Katowice Special Economic Zone. And um, yeah, we normally operate in a two shift pattern, so we reduced that end of March into a one shift uh, pattern. We applied for the government funds to uh, compensate uh, our people uh, on the salary uh, that uh, was filed uh, last uh, week, so we are waiting for their uh, response. Um, but let's say if you see the, the dynamics of the market, and especially now as a result of COVID-19 with significant impact uh, to our revenue and therefore also to our profitability, uh, we need to flex our uh, workforce uh, more uh, than, than before, than ever before, I would say. Uh, currently, uh, most of our people have a permanent uh, contract. 
but uh, we are looking now for the future to uh, to have a flexible uh, portion of 20 or 30 percent uh, that uh, that's needed to cover these uh, let's say unplanned events that uh, that uh, are uh, uh, yeah, changing uh, the econo econ economics and uh, the situation in the market uh, rapidly so um, we do expect that later this year we will recover that i think in the truck industry uh, transportation is, is is a little bit uh, more stable than in the passenger car side of the business but nevertheless as i said uh, we have a significant impact in april uh, where our revenue was 70 uh, percent less than uh, than last year so mm -hmm. flexibility of workforce is um, is is key and crucial uh, for our future Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. Uh, before we go to the question of Piero Canas, who uh, raised the question on, on the chat, I would like to give uh, Dino Terrello the possibility uh, to comment on this uh, situation and how do you see uh, the issue of flexibility in your company and the companies you work with? What are the opportunities on this moment and the challenges? Okay, thank you very much, Lukas. Uh... Look and uh, everybody, I, I were writing a question, but you anticipate my, my question brought. So, of course, uh, even for our company, unfortunately, this period is uh, similar like uh, other representatives explained before. So there is a really big uh, decrease of business around uh, 50 percent, almost 45, 50 percent in this period. And uh, uh, Obviously, we are obliged uh, also to, to apply all kind of condition to, to be safe and to, to give a minimum uh, right condition of uh, safety uh, against this situation of COVID to protect everybody. And uh, together this, uh, of course, uh, in one side, we, we were obliged to, to, to decrease our employee. On the other side, we are trying to, to, to become much more flexible, uh, looking at uh, the, the new organization and, and, uh, and situation that we are obliged to follow together our customer, especially in Korean customer uh, for Hyundai and Kia, like you know. They are working only, even for us, uh, uh, each week, sometimes two shifts, sometimes one shift. And, and uh, it's clear that we have to follow this kind of uh, situation, reorganizing uh, in, in, the, in the best solution, flexible possible, that, uh, that uh, could be manageable in this period, that mm -hmm. is manageable. It's clear that uh, uh, according to this situation and, uh, and uh, forecast uh, that uh, in this moment is also not so clear for, for next future, uh, one of our uh, important thinking and question in this moment is uh, in one side looking at government uh, uh, decision if uh, this uh, situation uh, could continue in, in future, so will be not stabilized like should be. If uh, there is uh, some uh, uh, rumors or noise uh, from government side that uh, that uh, this kind of help, finance help, uh, will continue or not, so because this is really difficult for us now to understand what will be the situation in the next three months, for instance. So mm -hmm. this is one concerning in question also. Second uh, consideration important that we are thinking is, of course, to implement and, and increase our future investment uh, on uh, digital uh, platform uh, investment and digital way to work uh, uh, all together in our company because of course uh, especially for the staff members uh, this this uh, solution could be uh, much more manageable in future uh, or due to 
continuation of this uh, situation, or in any case, uh, because our thinking, uh, working, uh, working with the global uh, business, uh, we are, we are thinking that this way to, to implement digital investment and communication would be one of uh, the really poor solution that uh, everybody we, we, we will have available to decrease the risk of uh, global business decrease. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what we are thinking for future then it's clear that uh, uh, we hope uh, in the next uh, three months, uh, four months maximum, that uh, all around the situation will be stabilized. And uh, in this moment, uh, for instance, the new program for Kia and Hyundai regarding new model are still confirmed. But I think even from their side, they, they, they are waiting that uh, this uh, situation will be stabilized uh, all around the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you very much for... Yeah. Uh, so if for you say that you think that in the next three months everything will stabilize, does this mean that the companies today involved in this discussion see a business recovery by the end of this year? Or is it more something that needs like to be planned over the next uh, one and a half year? where we say that, okay, even if we have a recovery, we have to take into account that at least in 2021, we will provide a restructuring process, put more uh, stress on, on flexibility of employment, uh, put more stress on uh, communication platforms and integration in uh, IoT uh, and IT uh, integration to have this kind of uh, remote uh, management possibilities. How do you see uh, this situation uh, from the point of view of your companies? Uh, today also we have uh, Zbigniew Sikora uh, in our group. Zbyszek, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, Hello, yeah, so, uh, you are involved in, in pre-production, in close cooperation with OEMs in setting up these pre-production integration systems. So you cooperate with the suppliers as well as with the OEMs. You work in different configurations uh, in automotive. So you have a broad overview of what's going on. How do you see the near future uh, for the automotive sector in terms also of your, your organization? Yeah, I think uh, there are two major points uh, concerning the recovery. One is when this defreezing of the of the countries process will go on, so co directly connected with the COVID uh, situation. And the second point is then what would be the impact uh, on the market, uh, especially on the automotive market, due to the uncertainty of the people and the unwealth uh, situation of the so, uh, society, which will have also as a second, in the second uh, row, the impact to the, to the volumes in automotive, but also in the other branches. I'm, I cannot show my screen, but if you could allow me to do, I can show you one simulation we are working Just with. Just a second. Yeah. <clears throat> Done. Thanks a lot. So we should be able to see it now. Yes, yes, we see it. So there are four scenarios which we we see um, and uh, work with, and the one is most probable now. So first one is the duration of this situation with the COVID, and if we say that this situation is there are three predictions or uh, four predictions, but generally now we can see that. I think Elias, if we are lucky, end of August, the situation will be more or less hopefully stabilized. Uh, I mean, that will not go, but I mean, the most of the uh, most of the restrictions will, be, uh, restrictions will be removed, yes. the production will be restarted. Mm -hmm. And we can observe now that most of the production are starting now, uh, end of April, for example, Volkswagen Postman has restarted. PSA was supposed to restart uh, in May, but then uh, here, here in Gliwice, but uh, it will restart only in June, we know. 
uh, now uh, in general germany uh, most of the companies will be starting in may with one shift sometimes two shift but then slowly and surely they will go up uh, so that should be i think latest by end of august uh, done in this new reality living with covid still uh, but the Second question would be rebound. So how fast the people start to be in the new normal and uh, will buy a car? Yeah, because nobody will is thinking now, nobody, not a lot of people will think about buying a new car if they have to care, take care about the economic situation and their homes. So that is the, the, the concern. And based on this prediction, the volume for this year only can lose like 30% in that scenario yeah which i think is now but it can be also easily more depending exactly on the recover and uh, uh, the rebound uh, concerning the new models uh, implementation we also observe from the market that the companies try to push uh, to delay the new model put on the market by six to twelve months because nobody wants to put a new model on the market in the recession. So the lifetime of the existing models, I think, would be extended a bit and the new models will start with the with the with the delay, like six to 12 months, I think, depending on the on the plant. However, um, unless there is really very close to SOP, for example, in Volkswagen, Poznan, the new caddy, We'll start now, we know, with a four weeks delay yeah, to original mm -hmm. planning, which is quite good mm, because it means mm, no really serious delay in the program. Mm -hmm. But again, the question mark is, big question mark is about the volumes this year and next year. And that's in the second round, depending really on the situation of the society and, uh, and the, the, the people will be prepared to buy a new cars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we just delay the decisions. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Answering yeah. the question to the personnel, I think uh, we'll be back to more flexible personnel. Everybody, as I have heard also earlier, is thinking now about that and this flexibility of about 30%, which is one shift. Uh, uh, as a flexible employment is something I, as the model, we also think about and believe it's uh, valid. It was, I think, uh, reduced significantly or I think based on the market, labor market situation last year. But I think now a lot of companies are thinking about that again. Yeah. If mm -hmm. not on that level, uh, if they did not stay on that level, yeah, mm -hmm. for the future grow, because that keeps you some um, flexibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A good okay. solution, yeah. just mm -hmm. to add from German, what we observe and what we applied in all German companies is this short work, um, which is a government solution, not only for the COVID, but in general, which help a lot um, because it's the model when you send people and then the costs are shared between the persons, which get a lower income, but cover than half half government and the companies in Poland we have with COVID with some restrictions that possibility now for a few months but uh, I think if we have something like that long term for that would be for the companies also a lot of help for the long term planning but also keeping the stability of employment yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you very much uh, on the chat there's a question from uh, de Venezia uh, about uh, the prognosis uh, for the uh, automotive market and the uh, uh, perspectives for the next year. Uh, and he asks, are there any data available? Uh, what we observe on the moment are only the, the historical data where we see the drops in the, the current uh, months and the previous months. Uh, but uh, prognosis, uh, I think at this moment, nobody really wants to make a prognosis. When I uh, talk to dealers, they say that, OK, uh, as long as people don't feel uh, really at ease to go to the dealer's network and to verify which uh, car they would like to have, 
because still in Poland they say people would like to see the car. Yeah, I, I've spoken to people in Western Europe where it's a lesser problem to uh, buy a car through internet, but here still in Poland, like it's more traditional. People want to feel and see the car. So as as long as the situation is, it will be difficult to 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 prognose in this area. On the other hand, uh, what I've heard the the uh, second-hand uh, cars are still uh, being bought, so at a certain point there is some kind of uh, uh, activities from the, the side of the, the buyers. Uh, maybe uh, among the uh, participants, uh, is there somebody who has more or less a report or an overview or an idea about what's going on uh, currently on the market? Please, if you would like to comment. Yeah, so uh, if it's possible and we will come up with this kind of uh, documents, we will send them also to the chamber so that the chamber can uh, share this uh, with you um, if this will be possible. Um, but I would like to come back still uh, to the second issue because uh, first we discussed the issue of uh, employment and flexibility on the other hand. Also, Dino already talked about it uh, and uh, the presentation of Rockwell. So uh, how do we see the Industry 4.0 solutions as a way uh, to uh, create a more uh, robust and to a company and to secure continuity? Yes. Uh, is somebody wanting to uh, comment on this issue? How do you see, how do your companies see uh, the possibility of providing this kind of uh, uh, Industry 4.0 uh, technologies, uh, digital technologies, as a way to cope with the new situation. Uh, I also hear from a lot of companies that they rather want to wait with this kind of investments, not knowing what the future will bring. So on the one hand, these technologies create some kind of flexibility, uh, make it possible to manage remotely the production. But on the other hand, it's a kind of investment, perhaps not really the time now to take this. So uh, please comment on this. Who wants to take the word? What I think, uh, yeah. if I can have my yes. voice right yes, now, yes. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's better right now, I've changed my room. So <laughs> previously during our presentation from Rockwell, I hope I'm, you can hear me well. Yes, it's we can hear you, but there's something with your microphone in the computer, but it's okay. okay. You can so, talk. So yes. There is something with my microphone, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, according to our presentation, as you said, there is a feeling on the market that all the Industry 4.0 solutions are like the addition for our production only. But we as a user, as uh, Kasia has said, yes, she's in our team uh, who is leading the digital journey in Rockwell Automation Plant located in Katowice in Special Economical Zone. Uh, it shows us uh, that uh, it was not only the addition during the crisis, all the industry for zero approach, digitalization and the topics that you have taken previously. So, for example, management during the crisis. Uh, all the dashboards, all the production KPIs are available uh, remotely for, for the managers, yes? So they don't have to be in the plant specifically, for example, to learn about how the production is going, uh, to monitor how the operators are doing, uh, if all the orders are on time. They can do it remotely without traveling and they still have an access uh, directly to the data. And uh, it's not only the data that we can look at uh, from in the past, yes? This is the real-time data. And uh, where we are going to is to use the real-time data to predict future uh, situations. So if we can see, for example, the drop down in the performance, we would like to predict, okay, how, what actions should we take to, um, to avoid this issue? Uh, furthermore, uh, all the 
most of the interactions between supporting functions uh, in the plant uh, are happening uh, also remotely via the system. So if we have to send a message, for example, to the maintenance, it can be generated in the system. We don't have to find a specific person. We can do it remotely. So definitely right now during the crisis, from the user perspective of the Rockwell Automation Plant, we can say that this is not only the addition the industry for zero approach, but this is a basic functionality for us that helped us to keep our production running and uh, to provide all the products to our customers on the time, uh, even though we had also some limitations that we have to take and uh, to provide all the security measures to prevent uh, COVID um, distribution for the people we had to keep them safe but we are able to still keep the production running so definitely it appeared that this is not only the addition but a very important investment to take during this time okay um with us is uh, wukash korczyk wukash are you there still yes i am Okay, Lukas, uh, uh, what is uh, your opinion about the issue of uh, new technologies as a way or, or digitalization technologies as a way of uh, creating a more uh, flexible structure for the company? Uh, what is the situation in your company on the moment and how does your company look at uh, the dig digital issues as a possibility for the future. Is this a, a discussion issue on the moment in the company, taking into account the current situation? As we all can notice that uh, about the di digital, digital, digital technology was blocked and stopped or not developed as, uh, as quick as we expected in the last couple of months and years. However, that current situation that make us uh, not the chance, but uh, we are we are we don't have another options. We have to develop the digitalization process system in in our companies. I think all of the companies, not only on my company. Uh, of course, according the pandemic uh, pandemic time, my company works on home office. Uh, we are splitted by two teams, let's say 50, 50 people work at plant and 50 people work at home on the home office. I mean about the office people and indirect operate indirect people. Uh, of course, the production is almost stop. There is some production, but for just let's say it's only let's say 30 percent of production at that moment. Uh, in terms of the Currently, my company is uh, seriously consider how to extend uh, digitalization in uh, our group. Uh, they ask all areas around the world, all plant through the world, what's the advantages, disadvantages, and what we can improve. Uh, and it's considered for the future. However, there is no final decision taken so far that uh, how deep we will go there and uh, how will be looks like. Uh, mm -hmm. We are under under consideration how, let's say, maybe not um, how to how to use it, but uh, uh, we think that uh, the world never come back to the uh, to the to the to the let's say industry before the pandemic issue. The point is only how to adopt in the new situation for the future. So that's. That's the point that now right now we are looking for to find the, the best way, the best practice, how to how to um, go to the new situation as a permanent situation. So that's uh, that situation in my plant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I see that uh, Dino has uh, also uh, his opinion. Uh, it's need to start to think a different work contract for the future, more flexible thinking, reduction or review of daily working time, uh, especially when we talk about uh, flexible workers uh, uh, on the shop floor in the productivity zone. And like you said, 
uh, this kind of new automation and remote uh, management of uh, production activities and production systems. Uh, like you said, uh, your company is looking at different kinds of uh, opportunities on international level. Uh, this is important uh, to get these good practices uh, to the different groups. Also within Silesia Automotive, we have our workshops on uh, digital technologies in cooperation with about of 30 companies uh, related to Industry 4.0. Uh, so uh, if within the companies are questions according to solutions, uh, like for instance the one uh, presented today by Rockwell Automation, we can organize these kind of activities uh, within the cluster uh, environment for the companies. Uh, I see that uh, Wukas has answered uh, the issue of um, uh, Piero concerning the quarantine, uh, especially that uh, the chief sanitary inspector, inspector has the opportunity to limit the time of uh, quarantine based on uh, individual approaches. Uh, in certain issues, what, what we have already seen in practice here for what concerns certain international partners cooperating with the special economic zone is that when they enter into Poland and are in quarantine, uh, they try to get this kind of verification analysis. So they go to a laboratory or the laboratory comes, they do the test and when the test gives uh, positive information that they are not infected, then they can leave their quarantine uh, room and go to the company. Uh, but like you said, uh, Piero, uh, if these are uh, visits uh, of only two days or one day or two days, even three days, uh, and the company's uh, count calculate is uh, in the overall time schedule. So you have to take into account that uh, in this kind of international transactions, uh, certain people can be asked to stay in quarantine for a longer period, perhaps not the full 14 days, but uh, at least the period in which they have to go through this uh, laboratory analysis and receive the results. Uh, this is an issue which was also mentioned in other discussion for us uh, uh, last weeks because the companies want to restart and restarting, especially for international companies, it also means local projects in which uh, international managers and engineers on, uh, are engaged and have to be on place here in Poland. And this is this is still a problem which is not really solved. So the only thing is uh, to have a good contact with the local uh, chief sanitary inspector uh, or the, the local uh, so-called sanapit organization and to uh, get a quick reply from them to shorten the period of quarantine. Okay, are there any other questions? Maybe uh, our participants want to raise uh, a question uh, for the other participants. It's now the time. Uh, you can do this through the chat or uh, by voice, please. Yeah, um, especially when we talk yeah. about uh, uh, servicing in the supply chain uh, and uh, we see the opportunities, also the challenges now, uh, because uh, there are a lot of uh, service partners. Uh, it's not only about producing the components and delivering the components in the supply chain, but also the services around. Uh, one of these services, it's uh, dealing with technical cleanliness and, and cleaning. Uh, these are specific specialized processes that have to be prepared uh, on time according to the schedules of production. Uh, and also here the COVID uh, situation has shown some challenges. Uh, among us is a representative of the Parts for Cleaning organization. Would you like to comment on this issue?
Is there some representative from parts for cleaning in our meeting? OK. Yeah, um, OK, so are there any other questions on this moment? Would you like to discuss some other issues related to the new normal, you can say, in automotive? Are there certain uh, things that you say that, OK, for me, the new normal in automotive, if we have to summarize this, yes, what does it mean today, uh, the new normal in automotive for you? How do you see the near future? You can comment on this, please. Can you please repeat the question? OK, so uh, to finalize uh, our discussion right now, my question is um, how do you see the new normal in automotive in the near future? What is, according to you, the new normal for the automotive sector? What are the main issues we should take into account? Yeah, this is Paul Knabe from TrueFlex. Um, I think uh, challenging is the right word. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think uh, flexibility um, and adapt to the new situation is uh, is key. Uh, and it's a very difficult uh, challenge we, we will have as an industry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Other persons? The Venezia Unde. Uh, I fully agree. Flexibility is one of the key words, but it's not enough. We must see <clears throat> what are the, in which way the market will react in the next six months. In my point of view, <clears throat> it's very important to understand the feeling of the people, because now money decreases in the pocket of the of, of all the workers, and it's a, it's a dramatically important um, to understand that now people buy by bread and uh, and the food instead of other things and auto is the other things so it's important i repeat again it's really really important to understand what will be what will be the priority in the next six months for sure auto in my point of view will be not mm -hmm. thanks on the other hand on the other hand if we take a look at the uh, last year one and a half year we have seen a lot of policies in European cities about public transport, trains, uh, buses and increasing public transport uh, as uh, 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 some kind of, of, of uh, way to diminish the amount of individual transport by cars. Uh, on this moment, we see that public transport is more on the background. People want to play safe and have their own transport. So, like you said, if not new cars, then probably uh, second-hand cars will be in the near future uh, bought before because of the fact that people want to travel safe. Uh, and, and I think individual transport uh, by second-hand cars in the, in the near half a year will raise. And this is also what I understand from uh, several car dealers that uh, in the last weeks uh, the questions for second-hand car cars rose. Uh, perhaps this is in the near term. Uh, maybe in the longer term the questions for new cars will come up when the virus is uh, still among us um, and uh, when everything, let's say, goes back to normal, people go back to work and again uh, people would, would like to uh, avoid uh, public transport, public meetings and public places. Uh, this is possible probably for, for several com uh, countries, uh, but it's still an open question. It's still an open question that has to be uh, verified. Uh, Dahmara uh, wondered if any one of us has data on what is going on in China. She has heard that people over there change their habits and buy cars to safe travel. Uh, and this is also what I said, like a possible scenario for Europe, especially uh, in the context of what we have seen uh, during the last uh, weeks. OK, um, I think we are uh, close to the uh, finish of our uh, webinar. This was the first webinar in a series of webinars uh, related to the road to IIBM. Um, 
in a way we uh, have uh, today representatives of co Italian companies uh, and also uh, companies uh, related to the uh, Salish Automotive and Advanced Manufacturing uh, Cluster. Uh, we had two issues uh, covered today, so labor market uh, impact uh, of the COVID and the aspects of flexibility and um, remote control of production systems with uh, Rockwell Automation. I think we have had uh, a nice uh, meeting and discussion. Um, we are uh, from our side, so Wukasz uh, Gorecki and I, open to your uh, issues and, and uh, questions uh, on a daily basis. Uh, and together with the Italian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, we will plan uh, additional webinars in the next months. So if you have issues or questions you would like to raise during such kind of webinars, feel free to send them or to the Chamber or to us and uh, we will find uh, the right people uh, to organize uh, presentations and discussions in this area. Um, I thank you very much for uh, your today's participation and your constructive input in the discussion. Um, and uh, Piero, I give the floor back to you for the final word. Uh, thank you very much, Luke. Uh, Piero uh, had to disconnect just a few minutes ago. So, so Anya, on, you have the floor. On my side, on behalf of the Italian Chamber of Commerce, uh, I would like to thank you uh, and thank all the participants, our members and, uh, and, uh, and everybody that uh, joined uh, our today's meeting. The first uh, uh, meeting uh, of the series road to EABM, uh, so it was really, uh, really interesting. Um, uh, all the presentations and uh, also the registered webinar will be uh, available also uh, at the website of the Italian Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so uh, you can uh, you can you can visit uh, our website uh, for and also we, we remain at your uh, we remain available if you have uh, if you want to contact us for anything. So again, thank you and uh, see you with uh, our next appointment uh, road to IBM. Thank you very much. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.